Welcome to part 17 in this unit tutorial series and in this video I'm just going to change the zombie spawner a bit uh, to improve it a bit. Uh, but first of all I'll go to the main scene and uh, make some more spawns for the zombie. So I'm going to call, I, I'm going to make a new empty game object. I'll just uh, center that and call it a zombie spawn group. Okay. And now for the zombie spawn, I'm going to give it a new tag. I think I'll call it like zombie spawn. So I'm going to make a new tag and call this zombie spawn done and uh, assign it to that done. All right. Uh, so what can I do now? I guess I can duplicate some of these uh, zombie spawns and just make a few more. So how about I just take this one, uh, duplicate, uh, move it a bit over there, change its rotation. How about I make another one? Just move it out like this, change its rotation. And uh, maybe I'll make yet another. Duplicate that, move it out. And change the rotation yet some more. And then just drop them all into the zombie spawn group, including the first one. Okay, so I've got my uh, zombie spawns all set up now, and I should be good to go. And uh, for editing that script, which I will do right now, so game manager zombie spawner. And this needs to change quite a lot. Uh, this, for example, this is no longer a serialized field. Uh, this is going to be a private game object array. And I'm going to call it zombie spawns. Oops. And uh, I'll keep the counter. I'll keep the number of zombies, but I'll have a few more variables now. And uh, they will be, um, let me think, uh, say a private int max number of zombies. That will be logical since I'm going to have waves of zombies. I'll just say like 80. And um, private float wave rate is equal to 10 for now. I guess I can increase that so there's more time between waves of zombies. Private bool is spawn activated. And this here is, is not really so much for me, it's more for you. I'm just setting it true here, but you could, what you could do is you could have something inside of the game, like a trigger of some kind or a button, like, you know, you press it uh, in the game or you walk into this area and then you change this Boolean to true. So you would, I guess you could set it, make it a public or turn it into a property and uh, alter it in that manner. But if for the sake of this uh, project, I'm just simply setting it to true uh, so that I can just get on with things. Um, okay, uh, the next thing I want to do uh, is to just simply adjust this one. Uh, it's not going to be uh, the zombie spawn dot transform dot position because I need to now uh, find a uh, suitable spawn point. So to do that, I need a couple of functions uh, and I'm not going to do things like this uh, either. So I need to change all of this code. Uh, but first of all, I'll make an enumerator for myself. I'm going to call this I enumerator. Oops, I enumerator, that's better. A zombie spawner. And an endless for loop. And I'll say yield return new wait for seconds. And that will be the wave rate. And then I'll say game object. So I'm going to do a check here that if there aren't too many zombies in the game already, then uh, then commence spawning, then spawn them. So game object zombies. Oh, so game object, and I'm going to call it uh, zombies. Just making this up on the on the go. And game object dot find game objects with tag. So find all the zombies already in the game. So zombies. Uh, oops, not zombie, zombie. That's what they're called. That's what the tag that they have is. Now, if zombies.length is 
less than the max number of zombies, uh, then in that case, uh, carry out this function, which I'm about to write, uh, commence uh, spawn. Okay, so now I need to make that. So void commence spawn. And inside of this, I'll check now if is spawn activated. So now if this is ready to go, if it's ready to work, then a zombie spawns, which is an array up here, zombie spawns is equal to game object uh, dot find game objects with tag. And I could actually put this in the start function now that I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. So zombie spawn so that I have a, uh, a permanent reference to that. Um, yeah, that would be pretty logical actually uh, to do that. So I might just do that. I'll just take this, cut it out. So it doesn't have to do that every time. Just put this up here in the override on start server. And then coming back here, for int i is equal to zero, i less than a uh, number of, uh, well, let me think, number of uh, zombies, yep, two, which is to spawn, which I need to spawn. And then, okay, if that is the case, then I'm gonna just have a uh, random, pick a random spawn point. So int random index is equal to random dot range. And what is that range? Zero to uh, zombie spawns dot length, which is an array. Okay, and that's done. And then quite simply, I'll use that function just below uh, spawn zombie. And I probably need to edit it. So, so let me just try that first. Spawn zombie. What did I call it? Spawn zombies. Oh yeah, okay. And I think I need to pass it pass it something. Uh, I'm thinking I might make a vector three. So I'll, I'll put it here. I'll put here a vector three now and call it spawn position, spawn pos. And what is that spawn position? It's the zombie spawns and random index. So which one of those uh, dot transform to so access the transform uh, dot position done. Okay, so now I'm supplying that. And then here I will replace this uh, bit of code uh, with that with the spawn position. Okay, that's done. Now coming back up, I haven't started my code routine yet. And I don't need that anymore. So I think I should delete that. Uh, here I should start the code routine. So zombie uh, spawner. Yep, yeah, that's the one. And done. Okay, I think that's uh, I think that's everything. Uh, let me just have a quick glance over it that I'm not forgetting something really obvious. Uh, yep. So what I'm doing is on uh, when the server starts, I just find all of the zombie spawns, dump them into an array, then I start this coroutine routine, which wait waits until the wave rate time has elapsed, and then it'll find all the zombies uh, that are currently in the game, and then just put that in an array. If the array is not too big, so there's not too many zombies already there, then I commence the spawn. And in the spawn, it's very, very simple. Just if the spawning is activated, so the, for example, the player has pressed a button or something like that, uh, started a generator maybe, for example. And then, uh, then in that case, then just uh, uh, spawn zombies for each uh, until the uh, number of zombies account is satisfied. Maybe that's too high. Maybe I'll set that down to say like 20. Yeah, 20 might be more reasonable since I have such a high wave rate. And uh, in that case, uh, then and they're just spawned at a random location, which you can see uh, happening uh, there. Okay, so just save that. And I guess I can try that out. I don't think I need to do anything else. So if I hit play, oh, whoops, I just need to go back to my other scene, just save that. All right, done. Okay, good. So I now I just have to wait for the time to elapse, which I think was uh, 10 seconds. Yep, 10 seconds. Uh, so I just wait for that. Mm -hmm. 
Right, there we go. So I have zombies at a variety of spawn points all coming in towards the player. That's good. Now how about I uh, build that? And uh, then now we should be able to see that some zombies will go for one player while others go for the other player. So if I get in quick enough, okay, that's good. So if I come back here to the server and look over there there we go and I should start seeing that see have a look in the um, editor you can see that some are veering off to go for this player while others are going for the other player and wow that's a lot of zombies so you can see that it is working uh, really really well actually and that's it so that's a uh, I guess a slightly better zombie spawner so you can make it so that you just have a, a button somewhere and when the the player presses that button then in that case uh, then uh, then the spawner is activated and then all this is gonna happen so that would give your time your players time to set up I guess oh I'm actually quite safe in the box Ah, if this is the case so for example if you see it like this and you want them to be able to hurt the player then just increase the attack range that's all and that problem will be solved right that's a lot a lot of uh, zombies and that's probably is 80 zombies if the wave rate has uh, finished I think it actually is Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I think that's enough for zombie stuff. I think now I'll get on to um, a setting up the UI and uh, making it a custom UI so that you know you can enter the IP address, your own I server IP address, so that other players can more conveniently connect to you. But okay, that's enough for this. Thanks for watching.